You may have seen our previous video on this USB quick charge outlet that Banggood sent us. If not, you can find it up here and linked in the video notes. As you'll remember, the team asked us if we wanted to review some products, so we suggested a few things that a lot of us may choose to use in our vans. In this video, we're going to take a look at the wireless battery condition monitor, and in future videos, we'll share what we thought of their 100 watt flexible solar panel with PWN controller and a solar powered tyre pressure monitoring system. And at the end of the series, to say thanks to you guys for watching, we'll be giving away the products that we've been sent. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything campervan and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up. It really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I'd know what you didn't like. In full disclosure, Banggood have sent us the products for free. We've not been paid to produce this video and Banggood don't have any editorial control over what we say. So everything we cover in this video is from our experience of the products and as always, I'm really keen that we give a genuine view of what we think about them. If you do choose to buy the products and use our links in the video description, we will receive a small commission, but the price you pay stays the same. Rest assured that we will tell you both the pros and the cons of the products and help you make an informed decision. So let's take a closer look at the battery condition monitor. This is a great little gadget to add to your 12 volt electrical system to keep tabs on the condition of your leisure battery and how much energy you're using and putting back into it. It's a well thought out and easily installed battery monitor, which not only shows the voltage of the battery, but also the current flowing in or out of the battery. The setup is made of two key parts, the sensor unit that can be hidden away close to your battery, and the display unit, which is designed to be panel mounted and connects to the sensor unit wirelessly, and is powered from a standard USB socket. It can be purchased in 50, 100, 200, 300 or 500 amp versions. The 50 is plenty for us. No instructions were included with the unit, but they are available to download from the Banggood product page. Let's have a quick look at installing the sensor unit. There are a few ways to do this depending on your setup, but we'll look at the most likely, which is where the unit is being powered from and is measuring the same source of power, i.e. your laser battery. For this, it's simply a case of connecting the positive and negative of the unit and making sure the jumper is set correctly. This tells the unit it's measuring and powering from the same source. As we'll be giving this unit away, I've only connected it temporarily using an inline fuse. Then to test it's working, we plug in the display and straight away we see the voltage registering. When it comes to measuring the current, the unit uses a Hall effect sensor, so there is no need to actually connect any wires to it. You just need to run the negative wire from the battery through the Hall effect sensor. So for me, once I've isolated the solar panel and the battery, I can just disconnect the battery lead from the solar controller, run it through the sensor, making sure the arrow on the sensor is pointing towards the load, i.e. away from the battery, then reconnect up and switch on the battery. But now I'm going to leave the solar panel switched off. Checking the monitor we can now see a current being drawn. This correlates nicely with what our solar controller is reading. The first setup action on the meter itself is to set the battery capacity. We have it connected to one 100 ampere battery so we're going to set the capacity to that. And then because we have had the battery on mains charge and we know it's at 100% capacity, we're going to tell the monitor this. And then watching this monitor, we can see that straight away we're using power and that those precious ampere hours are ticking away. Now, this is where we notice two things. One, there's no temperature reading. 
which there is on the unit on the web page. I've not been able to find any setting to switch this on. I don't see it being a major issue, but if you bought it expecting it, it could be disappointing. And second, my ampere hours were ticking away surprisingly fast, and the predicted life of the battery of 7 hours surprisingly short. So I did a quick test. Over an elapsed 5 minutes with a constant load of around 1.1 amps, the ampere hours dropped by 1, and the capacity by 1%. Now that's 10 times more than I would have expected. It's pretty easy to compensate for this by setting the battery capacity to 10 times the actual capacity, i.e. 1000 ampere hours rather than 100, which is what I did next. Following another test, this time for an hour, we can now see that the figures are calculating correctly, with a predicted life of 3 days 6 hours, and 1% of capacity used in 1 hour, with a load of 1 amp. You just need to remember that the ampere hours figure is actually 80.866 ampere hours, not 808.66 ampere hours. Now let's check that the meter measures the current in both directions. Switching on the solar panel and allowing the solar controller to kick in, we see the current turn positive, and the ampere hours and capacity start to increase. The time prediction now changes to predict the time to reach 100% capacity at the current charge rate, so about 45 minutes. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot more features that the unit has. It can be powered from one source and connected to a different one to measure. You just have to change the jump on the circuit board so that it knows. It also comes with leads that can be connected to relays to allow you to isolate the load or the charger when criteria you set are reached. The settings on the unit let you configure pretty much everything, from zeroing the amp measurements to make sure it measures accurately, the cutoff voltages and currents you may want, and the time the backlight stays on. Overall, the unit is easy to install and the insight it gives on your usage is really valuable. The flexibility of having the display wireless to the sensor makes it easy to position the display where you want it. It is disappointing that the product pages show it measuring temperature, which it doesn't seem to, and the problem we saw with the battery capacity setting being a factor of 10 or a decimal place out. We have highlighted these to the manufacturer and are awaiting a response. Hopefully it's just a setting somewhere that I've not found. I'll add an update in the video notes when we get one. As we've shown, it's possible to work around this, but just to be sure to check yours is reading in a similar fashion to compensate for it if you purchase one. When it comes to accuracy, I was really impressed comparing it to both our solar controller and a multimeter measurement. It was spot on. Given the price, the features and the accuracy, I still think it's a good buy and you can find a link to it in the video notes. As I mentioned, we'll be giving this one away at the end of this series of videos, so hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be sure you don't miss the giveaway or the other products we're in the process of trying out. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.